Ten seconds remaining. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a Beyond the Summit broadcast. I am Luminous, and we are joined by gods of BTS as well, and we're broadcasting the GEST Challenge. And today we're going to be casting Vichy Gaming versus Invasion MUFC. Now, gods, Invasion MUFC is a team that you have cast just very recently, and you know a lot about this team. So you take it away with the introduction about both of these teams, actually. Well, MUFC have just come off winning a, a pretty big lantern in Singapore. They won the Armageddon 32 Grand Sum of Asia, which is why they're now tagged up with the Armageddon tag. Uh, they also, days later, got sponsored by MUFC. So they picked up like three separate sponsors in like a week. I, I don't know how a team actually does that, but, MU, but Winter and his team have just managed to do that. Um, they've had one player change, though. They're not playing with Ling. They're playing with uh, FCFC, the former Invasion player, instead. It's a team, Winter, I, I mean, he, they, he drafts in a very similar way every game in and game in and game out, but it's a very solid style of drafting. They like to prioritize the mag, who will probably see Wang Wang playing. Then we've got the Shadow Demon, the TA. He always picks up one of his two support heroes early on in the draft, either the Shadow Demon or the Rubik, normally being those go-to supports. As for Vici, man, like, your guess is as good as mine. These guys have not been seen in such a long time. The only thing people really know or remember about them, including myself, is, well, CTY's anti-mage play and some of Fenrir's solo mid player. Um, so not, sorry, not Fenrir, it was um, the other player. The guy who's not here. Someone else who played the mid lane who played it really well for him. But right now, no anti-mage. They've gone for a life stealer instead. Yeah, Vichy Gaming is a team that actually took a lot of people to be surprised in the original G1 or the previous G1 League, which I haven't cast, Gods haven't cast, so we're also going to be learning quite a bit as we're casting this particular game. And I know a lot of people are going to be wondering, is this the ZSMJ team? No, that's not it. ZSMJ is in the other Vichy Gaming team. I know this is not confusing at all, but he will not be playing today. And uh, so fanboys out there, I'm sorry. And God's is gone. I swear we're only two feet away. He's upstairs, but I gotta recall him. Okay. All right, God's is here. His laptop is restarting, so he could cast alongside. This is the benefit of being the same house. Well, yeah, um. I guess we're just the second bad stage. The person yeah, I, I, you're I, I trying mean, to reach game, is they've currently gone unavailable. Going for Life's Look, Queen of Pain, this is sort of, I guess, the kind of more modern style of picks compared to their old anti-mate style, and we'll have to see what they look to round off their lineup with. It'll be uh, interesting to see whether it's CTY playing the Life's or if they go like the LG style play, go offensive trialing with it, and then get some kind of a safe lane carry solo. Okay, so can you speak a little bit more about the bands coming out from Winter? Because they're banning out Lone Druid, uh, Prophet, as well as Enigma. All of these pans kind of like go one direction or the other. Enigma's more for, I guess one thing they do have all in common is they're powerful pushers. Yeah. Are they afraid of pushing in general and why? A lot of, I mean, there's a lot of strong pushing power and also they all fit into that off lane because right now Vici, if they want to run Lifesteal in the safe lane, which you imagine is what they want to do with CTY, they need something to go on the off lane. All three of those here is capable of doing that. So banning them out, hey, you may as well. And I, I think partly why they, they don't do well against pushes, they, they pr prefer to play a more slow paced game, mm -hmm. uh, pushes and take losing towers. They, they don't like playing from behind and that's where sort of pushing can really catch you by surprise. Okay, so right now Armageddon's gonna pick up uh, Sand King alongside with that Magnus. So team fight's fairly in control. Now with that said, Rubik's also a very, very dangerous hero against a lot of these heroes. Can you imagine a burst strike without any casting animation, which is what he's gonna have if he does actually steal that spell. So it is going to be pretty insane. Bounty Hunter is going to be picked up as the answer. And Trax going to be nice against both Templar Assassin as well as the Sandstorm Sand King. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an offlaner who hasn't really got to see much play as of late uh, just because of how he doesn't really offer as much in the mid game. There's been too much sort of just group up as five, go for this sort of death ball army type push. And as a result, around the 15, 20 minute mark, when teams group, as, group up as five, track is, is great in those sort of heavy ganking style play, but you can't really do anything against a push. You also can't really contribute much if your team is grouped up as five, apart from maybe giving some vision from the track. So uh, it's it's a pick which is going to sort of show that Vici Gaming are going to be playing a different style of play. They'll look to maybe play a more gank heavy style. They've got the Queen of Pain who can look to roam around the map more. They've got Lifestyle who may just focus more on farming in his own lane rather than grouping up and pushing. And it'll be interesting to see what Vici get last with this last pick if they really want they could go for a jungler as their other support and oh there's there's Hontrash player's hero um Hontrash player known for playing sort of those carry role for the most part he's going to be planning that faceless void 
And Faces 4 is going to be actually perfect against a lot of these heroes. Now, of course, Rubik can steal that Chronosphere, which is always very dangerous. But if you lock down Life Lifestealer, um, and of course, Gondar can't actually do anything when you drop the Chrono on top. With that said, um, Queen of Pain as well as Lina could actually operate quite nicely outside of that Chronosphere. And it doesn't actually have a really good interaction. I guess the only quote unquote synergy that you have is the Chronosphere would not stop Sand King's Epicenter once he channels and blinks in or Burrow Strike in. So. It's going to be awkward when you have Magnus and Void on the same team, but Winter and his team, I'm not, I won't be surprised uh, that they would not mess up the combo. But for now, it looks like uh, the draft is finished. Who, who do you prefer in terms of the lineup? Yeah, I mean, I agree the Mag Void is always awkward. It's something that um, No Tidehunter did a lot of at Dreamhack. And they'd win these big team fights, but it always looked really weird when Void would, he would be constantly chronosphering his teammates, even though they'd still win the fights. Part of it comes to the fact that you get the Empower onto the Void. So he's doing a sure. ton of damage. Uh, it, there is some nice synergy there. I think overall that Vici, the one real, part, the one real here that I feel is a bit of a liability is always going to be the Bounty Hunter. Using Bounty Hunter up against a team fight lineup with a Sand King Mag, even the supports here. The, sand, the Shadow Demon is a great sort of teamfight support here. Bounty Hunter, where do you actually get your openings to go in unless you get yourself some fast items like a BKB up nice and early, which is basically highly unlikely as an offlaner. There's not really a whole lot you can do in a team fight. So apart from the Bounty Hunter pick, I think Vici Gaming have a more well-rounded lineup, but the Bounty Hunter poses a big, big liability. Yeah, it definitely does. Now with the flip side, if Vichy Gaming gets her game plan going nice and neat, they could actually pick off a lot of these MUFC heroes. Look at the ganking power of this lineup. It's actually very, very insane. Of course, the biggest gank combo that we see here is the Infest into Blink combo, which really is going to be the initiation. Um, Gods is completely correct. If this, these two teams run into each other in the 5v5 lineup, MUFC is going to take this Team 5 pretty much flat out. But if it's going to be a kind of a roaming, ganking, tower diving kind of playstyle, then I got to favor Vichy Gaming a little bit more. They're a lot more mobile, especially with the help of that track. And uh, they will be able to pick down heroes a lot easier as well. So hopefully we could get Gods back very very soon, as he has left my uh, the comforts of my bosom, and has now went back to his computer. Let us know as we are still figuring out the audios. I do apologize for any technical difficulties that we're facing so far, and. Uh, it's, uh, the studios is being set up. It's the only way that we could really talk about it. And uh, I'll, we'll be casting, we'll be doing our best to give you the best production. The person whom you're trying to reach is currently unavailable. All right, all right, thank Please you, Please leave a message after. Thank you, thank you, thank you for telling me that. All right, let's quickly introduce the players here as we have FZ. FZ going to be playing the Templar Assassin. Uh, looks like he's going to be going for the quick, quick bottle rush build here, not even getting a tango. We do have Winter, uh, both... Be picking up the sentry as well as the observers. Uh, we do have TFG playing the Sand King. WW here on the Magnus. Looks like he is going to be going on the off lane. Pick up Skewer first. And of course, Han Trash player is going to be playing his famous Faces Void here on the bot lane. Me on the dire side, we have FY playing the Rubik. Dark Star is going to be, or excuse me, Dark Green is going to be handling the Bounty Hunter. Uh, back in the mid lane here, we have San, San Diego. San, San Diego. San Diego playing the Queen of Pain, not rushing for the Quick Bottle, which is not something that we see too often. We have CTY here going to be going top top with the uh, Life Sealer. We have a very, very nice Lena set being handled by Finmer. And last but not least, we have... No, I already talked about FY. Here we go. Wards being already set up, a very, very deep sentry are going to be set up here, right, on the Radiant Jungle, which will actually prevent this pull that's going to be going on. Uh, we do see a lot of pulling, well, very common pull go, bo going to the mid lane. That's going to get blocked off. Of course, one one thing that we don't see too much from Temple Assassin is the ability for her actually to pop in the jungle and side play the hell out of this creep wave after pulling it once or twice. Uh, she is a lot better as a jungler here than most part, but it looks like top lane here skewered down here for the Lina inverse, and Lina is going to go down very, very fast. First of all, it's going to pick up by Fenrir, but there's an offensive disruption. Looks like Burrow Strike's going to cool down in about four seconds. There's a Telekinesis upward here, but F FTY trapped between two illusions and a tree, and that's two kills instantly being picked up by MUFC. They expected a solo top Magnus and suddenly two extra heroes showed up 
And that was some insane, insane early game advantage being picked up. You do not expect a trial lane being completely decimated like this early on. And that's exactly what's going to happen. The gold chart immediately swing about 1,000 gold early advantage here for MUSE. And that's the start that you cannot really account for early on. But they have to play with that kind of disadvantage now if you're Vichy Gaming. Back in the mid lane here, in this particular lane matchup, I got to give the edge to the Queen of Pain. That Shadow Strike makes us so much, so annoying for the melee-esque hero of Templar Assassin. But now... Of course, with a quick, quick bottle rush, we'll have it just about now. The thing is, with the uh, new nerf, of course, uh, not exactly new at this point, but with the nerf to the uh, Refraction Monocost, it's going to have a very, very tough time for him to actually handle the lane. Looks like we're going to have Gods back. Gods! Yo, yo, yo. Are you, are you okay now? I, I, I hope so. I, I think all our, all our mess-ups for the day are over now. At least I hope they are. It can't get worse, hopefully. Hey man, don't, don't test me here. <laughs> Alright, I'm not sure if you missed the uh, first blood and double kill up top, but uh, that definitely gave the Radiant a huge advantage. Basically, the offlane uh, on the Magnus has all do wrong. Like, they could leave him alone at that point, and he should be absolutely fine. Wow, so it was like a big level 1 5v5 clash? Or it was just like a, like a 3v2 that supports, went to plays wards, and they just got caught out. Okay, okay. Well, I'm still just loading in the game right now, so I'll catch up in just a second, but it sounds like an ideal start for the Radiant team. Yep, it really is. And back in the mid lane here, we do see Templar Assassin using that quick bottle, and San Diego laying down her wrath with her own bottle as well. Um, I gotta say, Queen of Pain should have this advantage, although once uh, the Templar Assassin hits level 5, she's gonna have a better lane control. But back in the mid lane, it looks like they're gonna go a little bit more offensive here against this Bounty Hunter. There is Sentry Wards available. As I say that though, uh, no, he does not. It looks like he has laid them for dewarding purposes on the top lane. Yeah, despite having this trial in the bottom, they have Bounty Hunter has still got up to level 3. Similar story with top lane at the mag, something which uh, both teams with their trial hasn't, haven't really succeeded in doing is zoning out those off lanes. Uh, mag getting the kills early on, getting a fast bottle, there's sort of some reasoning there, but Bounty Hunter has been pretty much given uh, a lot of XP by the Shadow Demon Sanking, so these two heroes haven't been all that active in looking to keep him out of the lane, but maybe they look to sort of get more aggressive, go for a smoke gank fairly soon. Uh, they've got a smoke coming out just now on the courier. Yep, smoke but no detection. Oh, there's a pair of dust being picked up on Sand King as well. So this is going to be the prime opportunity for them to get a kill. Or if they want to go for the safer kill, they could wait for Faces Void to turn level 6. Yeah, the, oh, looks like they're going to jump in right there to apply the slow. There's going to be a debuff. Dust is going to be soon after. There's a dust. Where's a Burrow Shrek to follow through? Um, yeah. uh, Did he dust too early? He dusted it. Wait. Oh. Wow. All right. I thought, he was, I thought he was like lagging or something. He's like walking back and forth. I'm like, wait, what's he doing? And it's like, okay, he dusted too early. Yep, he does it a bit too early. Well, once once you're in that a sandstorm, it would not work. Again, keep, let us keep uh, keep telling us about the audio levels. I do I did read your uh, thing about turning up the in-game sound, which I will do when I have the option to do so. I don't want to miss up any kills, especially with this uh, early active kind of roaming ganking sound from both sides. So, God's audio, I turned him up. Keep us uh, keep us informed in terms of the audio level. We do appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I think my Dota TV audio should be working. Someone said it wasn't working at one point, but I've just toggled it. It's showing up in there, so hopefully everything's okay now. Uh, oh, Shadow Demon get, hits, gets a hit off on the Courier bottom lane. He's not going to be able to take that down in winter. He's still trading blows. I think Sand King, the Dust is still on cooldown for three more seconds here. Not going to have it just yet, and I don't think they're going to risk wasting another Dust Charge here on a Bounty Hunter who they don't have vision of. Although if Bounty Hunter tries to go for some Grand Theft Auto creeps, yeah, they are going to go for it, but not before he gets a kill. Wow, Bounty Hunter gets a solo kill off... I mean, this this is already as bad as it gets. It looks like the Centaur even gets off a of Stomp, and we do have a TFG going to be chasing him quite a bit, but a lot of miscommunication on this spot lane, and this Bounty Hunter getting way more advantage than he should ever get. Yeah, I think this is just a very shaky start for MUFC. This is, so, this is sort of the area where they never normally lose. It was sort of, like, if, even if you go back to watching, like, the Malaysian teams like Orange play back uh, at the TI2 with Winter's team, it was the first 10 minutes of the game. That was normally where they're strongest. They don't normally make these kinds of mistakes in lane, and I think uh, just one little mishap by the dust from the Sand King getting messed up. Now Winter's sort of made a bit of a slip up. It's just sort of they need to just stay calm, compose themselves, and just sort of go back to the basics here. The problem is now Bounty Hunter's already going to be hitting level 6, so he can consider roaming around to the mid lane. He can go towards the top lane. There's lots of other things he can look to do rather than just try and stay bottom. He doesn't need to get more XP or more farm. Yeah, the other thing that we really want to make sure that the viewers are very comfortable knowing is that yes, when a 5v5 uh, team fight breaks out, MUFC with their heroes, definitely a lot stronger in that aspect. But 
in terms of a, a ganking kind of more roaming kind of play style, Vichy Gaming's got MEFC beat by far. And when you have a quick level 6 bounce counter, that's going to feel it drastically. It looks like he's going to be roaming towards that mid lane. With Queen of Pain getting full mana, level 6 already, they could actually get a quite easy kill on FCFC. FCFC is going to actually go on top, but he's going to run into multiple supports. Blink up top war here, and there's going to be Shadow Strike. Mel Strike is going to be dodged. Nicely played. Looks like he's going to fight his way up. But here comes uh, the Bounty Hunter. We're uh, four here up top. LSA is going to miss on top as well, but Sonic Wave is going to clean through. Here comes TFG. No Burrow Strike. A very, very expensive kill, but they got the track bonus goal, which everybody can benefit. So, pretty decent gank from uh, all things considered on the dire side. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's probably better that it was a little hard to get because if they did, if they got it really easy, fast and easy, they, the track gold wouldn't have been there. And all four heroes getting that track gold is a nice little boost to them. Uh, the extra 100, 150 gold for the bounty hunter and the 50 extra gold to each teammate does, does add up. So, a nice little pickup for Vici Gaming, and even though they use all those ultimates, I think it's still worthwhile. They've still got lots of space for Lysil to be farming at top lane. He's gone for the Midas build. You've got Void farming at bottom lane. He's not going for a Midas of his own. He's going straight into that battle fury, it looks like. Yeah, Midas. Uh, well, Midas on Lifestealer is one of the more common things that we see, especially in these Asian games. But that Battle Fury build is so, so good on Faces Void. He is level 6 at this point, so look towards him actually joining a level of team fights uh, when he has the option to. Back in the mid lane, though, they're going right on the Sand King. Sand King trying to fight his way out. Looks like there's going to be a dust use as well. South's going to get cancelled. San Diego going to go for the kill. Looks like he is going to pick up the kill. It's going to blink out just fine there as well. Meanwhile, it looks like they trade a kill here and there. I got to say, still, Dyer got the advantage because of the track bonus. And uh, both solo mid basically trading kills on you know the off lane and support. Yeah, at this point, Bounty Hunter, it, his death isn't going to mean a whole lot. Regardless, he's still level 6. He can look to just keep on ganking. He didn't get XP for that kill, but he's still got a little chunk of gold. And he's going to be respawning just I mean, quite happily just to keep trading his life for kills wherever possible. Especially kills going the way of Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain gets solo XP. Good goal for that. And Queen of Pain needs that after sort of the rough start against the TA mid lane. TA did sort of have a slight CS lead there. And uh, FCFZ, well, phase boots up. No, I'm now going to start looking towards his Blink Dagger at the mid lane. But San Diego, he's starting to catch up. He is a level behind the TA still. Uh, but that's going to be slowly, bit by bit, made up with kills like that from the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, so one thing I want to point about is that Templar Assassin is actually going for the phase boot, which was a very popular boot choice uh, pre-nerf on the Templar Assassin. But nowadays, pros really opt for the Tres simply because he needs a mana. But back in top lane here, open wounds on WW. He's going to skewer, but gets picked up mid skewer. There's a toss back, so the LSA is going to miss, but when Infest, they're going to pick it up. So not exactly the most uh, kind of coordinated gang from Vichy Gaming, but the kill still very, very welcome. What's your dot on the Treads? Uh, on TA, simply like the mana cost is actually intense on that refraction now. Yeah, I, I think it is something which you can definitely justify. And having that extra attack speed is always going to be useful when you want to be bringing down someone nice and fast. I mean, Facebook is so nice, but if you go something like tread into a Yasha and then go for what, go for whatever item you want to be, like you go tread Yasha, then you blink that, you can get your movement speed from that. I definitely think it's something you can make a lot of use of. I know AUI2000 was talking about how he doesn't go phase boots drum on Tiny because he wants to have the, the Intel Intel treads from the... He wants to be able to use the tread switching just because of how strong a tool it is. So I think there is a lot of justification to going treads over phase boots. Man, Bounty Hunter now getting solo kills on support. And let's see if Sanky can punish for him. He does have that dust and he's not even going to need to pop it. Burrow Strike for the kill. Again, oh, yeah. Bounty Hunter happy with that exchange. He gets a solo kill. Got the track bonus call. He gave a little bit of gold to the Sand King, but hey, he got a lot more of it, and he's going to be getting a quote-unquote free trip back at home. That's a way to look at it if he wants to do so. Back in the mid lane here, we're going to see a Telekinesis. LSA is going to nice toss back into a Telekinesis, but will that be enough? Another Refraction gets popped, and that should be it. As the Teleportation so comes in, that's going to be a Shadow Demon. There's going to be a Disruption on the Finrar, but that should be fine. No, on uh, FY. Yeah, I think after that second Refraction, TA is like, no way I'm going back in. I've just chewed through two full Refractions, and he would have been brought down very, very quickly to a Queen of Pain, Queen of Pain nuke, and Bounty Hunter was coming in as well. So it was definitely the right decision not to commit to that. And uh, Shadow Demon just making sure that TA is okay in the mid lane. And this is, I mean, TA is just so hard to gank unless you bring Bounty Hunter. And even if you do, I mean, have it, if you've already got Refraction up and it's about to come off cooldown, you get two Refracts, you block so much damage. It's where you really need to time those ganks well. But end of the day, if you're not ganking successfully, it's as long as you've got life still farming, you're getting trades elsewhere on the map. Vici are still sort of making the best of this trade. I just turned down my mic volume a little bit as well again. Keep telling us about these audio differences. This is our first setup of the... I don't even know what to call this. This is like a temporary setup before the studio equipment's arriving. Which, by the way, when are they arriving? 
Um, I think it's all been ordered now. It should be arriving in about seven to ten days' time, and then we're going to start building our studio. But until then, we've got the we're basically hijacking Purge's setup, which 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 in theory should be working fine, but um, in practice, we've never actually used it before. <laughs> All right, it looks like we're going to see a big rotation coming from the mid lane. Temple Assassin already already using her to refresh, and oh man, she is so dead. As I say that though, she jukes south, and they're going to go on a sanking, but they found out that there was only an illusion. So MUFC dodges another big one. Void has not actually joined any fight, which I keep pointing out because I feel like Void's one of those heroes that could actually make a huge impact early on. But he's actually fairly happy to be farming away on the bot lane, putting on pressure, making sure that MBFC or excuse me, Vichy Gaming always have to at least remember that there is a void on the bot lane and continue to deal with him. Eventually, has to deal with him. Yeah, the way uh, the way MFC often play with this void is they don't want him leaving the lane to come to team fights, but they use that Chronosphere for solo kills. If he's up against an offlaner, they'll bring two supports and use a Chronosphere just for that solo kill whenever possible. Basically, help him get the Battle Fury treads up as fast as possible. And even if you're using it just for a kill here or there, it helps you maintain dominance over your lane as well as boost up your gold just that little bit. But for the most part, Vici haven't really been giving any openings in the bottom lane for him to use that Chronosphere. So if he wants to be getting active, he's got to be maybe TPing to these some of these other lanes and. Right now, he's not even considering doing that. He hasn't got a TP on him. He just wants to get that battle free up and basically accelerate his farm. He's behind the lifestealer CTY. CTY actually went back for the, like, the mobility items, the phase drums, even after going from minor. So this is going to slow down his late game items quite a bit. I, I kind of like it quite a bit because, again, they're going to go for a more likely a mid-game win. So I think phase drum is going to be so helpful when you're going to be chasing heroes back and forth. But look at it. It looks like we're going to see a little bit of engagement as the Templar Assassin gets tracked up. Look at Winter pulling that top stack out the wazoo. So once that battle fear is going to pick up here, he's going to have a lot of accelerator farm. Winter going to, well, find the bounty hunter. There's going to be, there's a double dust being used as well. Where's the burrow strike? There's going to be a very long range purge, but what does the Sanky want to go in? He's going to burrow on the Lena, but there comes the WW. Is he going to drop his ultimate? Huge Sonic Wave ultimate here. They're going to go on Fin Refer. It's going to be fine as well. They're going to still go and be on WW. One more blink and scream. This should do it. Can they get off the second track? That track's going to be so important. There's going to be a track. There's going to be blink, and there's just going to be a stream for the kill. Vichy Gaming, like I said, not for 5v5 team fight. For these slow pickoffs, small engagements, they're so much stronger. And that track, putting them yeah. miles ahead in terms of gold. That was a really poorly coordinated fight from MUFC, though. They, it's, it's, I mean, they, firstly, Winter leads off with the Demonic Purge, and they're, they're thinking about going the Bounty Hunter. But then they quickly see this Lena, and they're like, Sanking's like, oh, let's go for Lena instead. But it was at the, he's stunned at the same time as the Disruption. They stacked those two spells on top of each other, basically negating the Sanking stun. And that was e so easy for Vichy to turn that fight around. They just, MUFC, they need to decide better and coordinate who they went on there. Uh, it was just a really, really big mishap coming out of them but it's it's still they're still in an all right position here they're starting to fall behind by by a bit as far as gold goes about 2 2.5k but they've got battle fury coming to faceless void here so he's going to accelerate his farm and it looks like the plan is right now just play towards the late game get him that battle fury treads then maybe they start bringing him to some fights but until then they just want him farming yeah, the other thing is that even though the Dyer is getting a lot of these hero kills here and there, they're not getting any tower kills. And again, having all these early towers is going to be so important because if there's any going to be tower engagement, tower confrontations, again, the Radiant is going to have that advantage when there's uh, those big ultimates. Back in the top lane here, looks like uh, Vichy Gaming picked up a free kill on the Sanking with the help of a Dust or just kind of a... Uh, all they needed was a Telekinesis, it seems like. And again, CTY just unopposed in terms of the farm up to another 2500 gold i wonder what's going to go for uh but for now our attention's on the bot lane as void perhaps in a little bit of trouble after picking up his battle fairy well i think if they if this will favor abc if they're ready for this this jump on the void at bottom lane if they can prepare for it have the chronosphere up and ready they can look to turn this around because unless life still comes in this fight this is not going to be a fight that Vici can really take up against a chronosphere and there, there's your life life steals armor he's picked up a full armlet so he's got armlet Phase drums minus at 14, 15 minutes into, into the game. Yeah, we've seen some pretty nasty farm, but this is a, a very, very good example of that as well. Looks like going to go on right on FCFC, but Bounty Hunter got to back it off. A uh, couple of teleportation control comes in as well. Keep in mind that WW still has that reverse polarity. Has not used it just yet. He's going to go right in. Where's the RP? No, he gets blown up before even dropping it. And suddenly he's going to try to TP out. No way he's going to do so and gets four heroes. And very conven uh, conveniently, they're going to be right next to that Roshan pit with the Desolator. If they really want to, or excuse me, Armlet, if they want to challenge that Roshan, they could easily do it. But looks like they're going to be worrying on the bot lane right now. And again, make sure the Han Trash player does not get too big too fast. Yeah, and the problem is, I mean, Han Trash player just, he can't fight the lifestyle right now. You look at this lifestyle, he's got four items essentially. He's got Phase, Midas, 
drums and armor. Sure, none of them are big late game items. Void's got the battle free, which is a slightly more expensive item than anything Lifesteal has, but Lifesteal's just got the, the one. Now the second item with his treads up, but he's a couple items behind this Lifesteal. Lifesteal just being going much more cost effective with, with his build, and this basically allows Vici to, like you say, win in this early to mid game stage. They're not looking to take it late game, especially when you're up against a mag sanking teamfight AoE. They just want to sort of go, it's like the old IG face rush style lineup. They've got the life dealer, they've got the bounty hunter. They've got a sort of a more mobile solo mid in the Queen of Pain than something like the Night Stalk, which IG used to use. But if they can pull this off and just keep on getting kills, keep on controlling the map, take down some of these towers, that's really the next big thing for them. They need to follow up these kills with these tier one towers at mid and bottom lane. Yeah, one of the, I guess, quote unquote, the weakness of this uh, Vichy gaming lineup is that even though they're leading by 4,000 gold, they can't actually capitalize it with any kind of big team fight items. I don't see the making of a mech, I don't see any like making of a pipe if they had it with that 4,000 gold lead i could feel like they could start challenging these tier, tier one towers and basically take them for free but because they don't have it they still got to respect that rp they still got to respect that chrono and that's why it's actually mufc mufc that's actually going to be playing offensive at least for now but back in the mid lane here lifestyle just runs in like he doesn't care bro strike comes in from the back and they go on that lena lena is going to be dead instantly and that lifestealer trades for a sanking but here comes the queen of pain as well there's going to be a chrono onto two and that chrono just perfectly placed on the life stealer. Where's the RP to follow up? No RP just yet. They're gonna go right on Han Trash player. Can they get that kill? It's gonna be very, very important. They do get it. There's a Chronosphere onto the two. Nice solo and Queen of Pain trying to get that right click damage in. Here comes finally the bounty hunter, but looks like FTFC nice dodge on the Mel Strike. Can they pick off any more hero? I think that's gonna be it. I gotta say, so far, big, big win for the Radiant. I want to say Han Trash players still die, but well. Too early call this as they're gonna still chase for WW. I'm not sure why he skewered backwards. He was looking for the Queen of Pain. He saw Queen of Pain was really low and knew that if he hit a skewer and shockwave, he could get the kill, but he was completely out outmaneuvered by the Queen of Pain. And Queen of Pain, as soon as the shockwave and skewer got wasted, was like, okay, I'll just blink back in and get this kill for my team. Yeah. More track gold going to Vici as well. I felt the trade, you know, for the life stealer for the void was fine, especially when you got the tier yeah. one tower. When you that chrono was absolutely beautiful, but that dive at the end really did not look too nice. With that said, though, look at the golden temple assassin phase Yasha, like you pointed out, for that insane mobility. But now a blink dagger on top of that, if that's what he's want, and that could be extremely dangerous. Again, these these dire uh, supports these dire heroes like to play, you know. Uh, Rome and twos, Rome and threes, and uh, a well played Templar assassin could just shred them easily by herself. Yeah, I, I think that's a really a strong point in the MUFC line. They're not entirely relying on the faceless void to basically DPS them through, through these fights. If if they trade void for the life stealer, it works out really well for them because they've still got TA in the fight, who's got FaZe, Yasha, and a blink dagger up now. And that's going to be doing a ton of damage. And for Vici, while they've got this gold lead of what, about 4k, that 4k gold difference is entirely on one hero. That's pretty much all comes down to the life stealer who's about two three k gold ahead of the faces void so if they deal with him suddenly that gold difference doesn't really exist anymore yeah i gotta say queen of pain has some of that gold lead as well she's actually doing quite yeah. well unfortunately her her goal lead doesn't actually show until she finished that cypher vice which is only like about 100 go away once she does however finish that cypher vice it could be extremely extremely dangerous to these heroes that generally rely on their escape spells such as that uh, time walk or those refractions uh, if you get that quick siphon, it, it's basically a free pickoff. Easily transition to push back into mid lane. Looks like Bounty Hunter is going to find herself a Bounty oh. I say, I say he's going to find himself a Templar Assassin. But Templar Assassin easily drives him away. Well, I mean, I feel for MUFC now, as far as what they need to do here, they just need to really find their own tempo. I, I think they can't just team fight right now. They need to get... Well, he faces Void X. No, he's got his next time. He's got his Mask of Madness, so... At this point, it's well. I guess they're not going straight for a BKB, so maybe they do look to fight. If they can find a nice little combo with the Mag here, Mag who's still trying to get that Blink Dagger up, but he's still he's so far away from it. Do you fight? Do you think he, they look to fight before he has the Blink Dagger up, or they do they just try sit back and finish the Blink now? I I, I want to say they want to sit back and, and finish the Blink, but it's, again, you gotta ref oh. Well, well, Templar Assassin is not doing any sitting back as he's in the middle of two or three enemy heroes. I, I want to say the Radiant wants to sit back considering that they have the quote unquote late game heroes, right? Templar Assassin, decent in the late game, but more importantly, the Void with the uh, Empire's great late game with the RP and, of course, the Sanking Ultimate backup. They want the late game. The problem is, will the Dire allow them to have it? They have, you know, Blink Scythe, the Blink Infest Bomb, and of course, this Bounty Hunter running around tracking everybody up. I'm not sure whether Vichy Gaming is going to give them that room. 
Yeah, and I mean, taking like an, uh, another uh, the net worth here for Faceless Void, he's only just ahead of the Queen of Pain. This is really a scenario where um, there's two heroes on this dire side who are looking to pose a big threat in the late game. Queen of Pain with a completed Scythe of Ice, like you say, going to be working really well, preventing the Faceless Void from being able to time walk away, the refraction from the TA. They've got some nice counter then. It's, it's also, they need that backup carry when you're going late game up against a TA who's going to have some decent farm as well. And uh, the fact that Mag doesn't have his Blink Dagger up yet, it really poses a bit of a liability for this MUFC side. Yeah, but so far I think it's actually going pretty well for MUFC. The fact that they can take a 5, 5v5 engagement right now, despite having a better 5v5 team. They're still trading for towers, as I say that there's a glyph on the top tier 1, and two heroes going to be teleporting in on the tier 2, or one teleporting to the tier 1 as well. Everybody making sure to defend this tower, and San Diego having the life sealer inside of him could engage instantly uh, on notice with the blink infest as well as the Cypher Vice, the Radiant team all backing off. Uh, very, very smart play for MUFC to go for that trade, just unfortunately, they just have to back off, respecting the item advantage of uh, Visha Gaming for now. Yeah, I, I think they would, they'd would. love to t They'd love to take a team fight, but without a Blink Dagger and Mag, and with the, like you say, the big item advantage, Life Stealer especially now with a finished off Reaver, when he gets that hard up, he suddenly can't really be brought down. You can catch him in a Chronosphere, you can catch him in an RP, they have the... They have the two big ultis which go through his rage, his magic immunity, but if you don't have enough damage to basically burst through all that HP that a heart gives, he's going to turn around and you infest into a creep, rage off, and life still back up to full HP. They do find Winter right now. Winter's going to be a free pick off. The question is, who's going to pick up the kill? Looks like Queen of Pain picks up the last hit. Are they going to go for the Roshan? Are they going to go for the tier 2? I feel like Roshan's going to be easier, or are they going to keep looking for the pickoffs? Right now, it's Vichy Gaming's... Uh, game to win or lose, I feel like they're so, they're so much stronger at this point in the game. But it seems like they're not actually winning as hard as they could be. All the tier twos are still up, and if you're if you're MUFC, you're happy. I mean, this game is still very much low, you know, in the hands. Yeah, I think it's it's not as bad as it could be. The good news for Vici Gaming is they've finally taken these these pesky tier one towers at mid lane as well as bottom. Now they go over to the Roshan pit. They, if they can get Roshan here, they, they're just sort of doing this slow and steady snowball where they're getting bigger and bigger, f slightly further and further ahead with every little victory they get. Problem is they're giving MUFC a lot of space. That's space where we see Mag now with the Blink Dagger. He's also at level 11, so it's level 2 RP. We've got, well, Sanking still a bit of a way to go for his Blink Dagger, but then you've got the BKB coming on Faceless Void as well as a level 16. So we're going to have that level 3 Chronosphere with a, a Faceless Void getting closer and closer to a BKB. He's got something, he's got a Mithril Hammer, so he's just 1k from a BKB. So I think MUFC are happy to fall slightly further behind as far as the, the overall big picture in terms of gold and XP, but they know they're getting some sort of more key items compared to Vici Gaming who've already got their key items up. Yeah, the next 5 to 10 minutes is going to be so very much important for Vichy Gaming. Not again for the item they're going to be picking up, but for how many towers are going to knock down, how many kills they're going to get. These kills, by the way, has been really slowed and trickled down. Bounty Hunter was doing a lot of work earlier when the heroes are split up. MUFC now playing the strength of their lineup, which is 5-man Dota. And as long as they don't split up, you know, they're not going to actually lose too many heroes. You know, I, we just saw Winter dying there, but that's the kind of the odd pickoff that you don't expect to happen too often anymore. Again, you cannot jump in against this MEFC lineup, even if you're a side for Vice Queen of Pain. You are just going to get picked off quickly. Yeah, it's it's something where the, the side of Vice just allows you basically to get a pick off and turn things into a 4v5 right off the start of your Vici game, unless you get that perfect counter initiation. And that's something which MEFC have the potential to do. And even if someone gets scythed up, by the Queen of Pain. Shadow Demon, if he's positioned well, can be looking for that defensive disruption, although so far, Winter's been finding himself really struggling to stay alive in these fights. He's been the one who's getting burst down very quickly quite often. Yeah, he's the, he's the easy target, and Queen of Pain with that mobility could always find him. I gotta say, look at the minimap and look at the Observer Wards for the Dire. They just see absolutely everything in the jungle, and that's gonna be so useful, so helpful for that Queen of Pain to you know find a, a solo target, and she could easily br bring any solo target down. Again, she's not finding any solo targets, because these guys are holding hands all day. Yeah, it's... It's MUFC. I think they're making the right decision. Just stick together for the time being and uh, prepare for... I mean, basically, if they're together, they know there's very little chance of anyone going down and anything really going the way of each game. They almost catch up the faces void here. They do have the side of the vice to basically try and burst him down before he pops that BKB, which is now completed. But the time walk out, and if they needed, there was going to be a disruption coming out from Winter to help keep him alive. Vichy Gaming going to be going for this tier 2 tower. Very surprised to see that Radiant's going to just give it up for free. I feel like once Vichy Gaming to notice that they're just a lot stronger, they are going to just go for all the other tier 2. I, I guess the logic is, if you're not going to defend this one, what makes you going to convince us that you're going to defend the other ones? I'm not sure whether 
that's a correct decision for MVFC to just let it go for free. Yeah, it's it's really. I think the hard thing is they just don't have any long range AOE spam. They maybe want to defend it, but they're not going to be able to easily get in there with a with a nice blink RP. With it, I mean, they've got no blink on tanking. Uh oh, top lane. This yep. is the death of TFG. Life still was there. He's going to get the kill with the infest damage, but. This is, I think the problem for MUFC is defending these lanes, because not only do you need to be able to hit off the big ultimates, but you also be able to need to clear the creep waves, and all they've really got to do that is a shockwave coming from a mag. And if he's going up front to shockwave a creep wave, there's a high chance of him getting blinked, scythed up, and just burst down. If they don't have an RP, there's no way they can fight. Yeah, and you don't really want him to be in front. I guess really what they were looking for is a sanking to farm up for that blink, but right now they have found... Bounce! Oh, look at him just going for the chaos on the creep. That's kind of like a slap on the wrist as well as the face at the same time. Uh, by the way, I, I really respected the sanking decision to farm the enemy jungle despite him getting picked off. That's generally the best place to farm if you're playing kind of these defensively when you're losing, when you can't farm your own jungle. Just farm the enemy jungle. It's probably a lot safer. Obviously, you got punished for it. But still, the, the correct thing to do, in my opinion. But it looks like Vichy Gaming says, All right, you didn't defend the bot tier 2. We're going to come for the mid tier 2. And let's see if we're going to defend this one. Early Rage gets popped off here for the life. So that could be a sign to go for the Radiant team. But as to say that, they're still very spread open. They're still waiting for TFG for that blink. He had the blink go earlier. Just got picked off. He might get picked off again here before finishing that blink. Which is going to be very, very unfortunate for uh, MUFC. And this is something which YYF kind of made famous with IG with their slow si sieges with the lifestealer. With the six second rage, you spend three or four seconds attacking the tower and rage form, then like a second, second or two before it wears off, you back off so they can't go on you. Top lane though, we're going to see a Mac use an RP. They want San Diego. Can they get the Queen of Pain? Can they bring him down? He's going to blink out. He's still in BKB for him. Void going to chase on after. The Mask of Madness, they do bring down Queen of Pain, but here comes the Kanagan. CTY has arrived. He doesn't get the Sanking. Sanking go into the trees. TP that Chronosphere coming up from Faceless Void. They brought down the Bounty Hunter as well. They're going to go into CTY. Can they bring him down? He's got a heart as well as an H, so you have to bring him down twice. They decide not to go from stolen Chronosphere, it looks like. As Faceless Void, not going to get d damaged by that. TA still looking around, trying to find this Lena in the trees here. As it looks like Lena will take a full stuns up to here, but there's no escape here. Faceless Void gets a triple kill at top lane. And Avicii Gaming didn't really get anything out of that. One, the actual F just happened in that team fight. Bounty Hunter died as well. He that team back. fight made zero sense. On one side, you have the best mobility team. On the other side, the Radiant has nothing but big AoE ultimates. So in a big cluster F of team fight, you expect the AoE ultimates to actually fall down. As I say that here, look at the blink initiation coming in. But here comes the life sealer. He wants WW. He's going to get WW. One for one trade so far. Bounty Hunter went down. Again, that fight made no sense. The team with the blink, the, the team with Scythe with the track, with the open wounds, they should be winning that team fight. But it was so spread open, and somehow the Radiant came back. That team fight just put MVFC right back in this game, I feel like. Well, man, Hon Trash player happened. That was a fantastic Chronosphere. I've got, I, I really feel that was really the big deciding factor there. The Mag RP to set things up. I, I mean, Mag RP was essentially, I don't know about wasted, but it didn't really accomplish a whole lot. It got Queen of Pain down nice and low, so Queen of Pain couldn't really take part in the fight. And I think the problem was, once Queen of Pain couldn't take part in the fight, then you had the only source of damage being this Life Slur. And Life Slur right now, he's gone for Heart of Tarras, so he's not really packing a lot of damage. He's really tanky, but he just gets kited around. And if Queen of Pain isn't there to kill off heroes, Life Slur can't really do a whole lot. MUFC just avoid him, go for other targets, and they brought down everyone. Then they, well, they, they're like, well, we can't really kill this Life Slur. Let's just move on. Let's just... I mean, let's just give up this fight now. We've killed off four other heroes. We don't, we've already won the fight. Ignore the life, so let's just back off and keep farming. Yeah, generally, when a life slur gets uncontested uh, in a, a team fight, he really get, gets a lot of damage in. But unfortunately, he didn't have track. He didn't have the Scythe of Ice lockdown or any other lockdown spell, for that matter. So he basically sat there and, and was a big melee creep. And a lot of people just ran around, ran circles around him, I might have to add. Looks like the Radiant team is going to be dodging back and forth in the jungle. Winter not going to get caught out here. Going to teleport back... I feel like just leading the Dire team by their noses. And the fact that MBFC is surviving right now, there's a Blink Dagger being picked up, as well as a Jam on Sanking. I think they're set for this mid-game. I, I felt like they have dodged a very dangerous stage of Vichy Gaming, and we're very much so entering this big late-game 5v5 engagement, where the Radiant team is gonna got, just got them beat simply by hero potential. Yeah, I, I think this. I think the, the the potential of this radiant team to go late game is just really scary right now. And you've got the blink daggers up on your two main key heroes. We're going to see more mobility coming out. And there was something where they have this all-out team fight. It's the blinks and sort of the mobility meant to be on the Vici gaming side with the bounty hunter, the life stealer going for the phase drums build, the queen of pain with the blink. 
Um, but once we see a four staff as well in this mag, you've got time walk on the faces four. You've got a blink dagger and TA. They've got now a solid amount of mobility of their own. Sankey's got his completed blink dagger as well as a level two epicenter. So this is a really scary potential coming out of this radiant side to do a lot of damage in a team fight. The BKBs are there on bounty hunter as well as Queen of Pain to negate a lot of the damage like the epicenter. But there's so much that goes through BKB that if, if I mean, mag only has to catch maybe two heroes with an RP, screw them back in, and the fight's pretty much already won for MUFC. Yep, and look at the item purchase here coming from Void. Butterfly is going to synergize perfectly with the evasion that he already has from Backtrack, or it's pseudo evasion if you call it. Also the magical immunity. I mean, how are you going to kill this guy? Uh, you can't burst him down magically anymore, so you're going to rely on your life stealer. But, as I say that, looks like the two heroes are going to be running right into, oh, Lena Inverse, two-man bro strike, and that's going to be two support kills instantly. I say that, say that he didn't actually use a mail strike just yet. Blink forward, there's a bro strike being stolen, Cypher Vice on top of FC, FC as well, but he's just so tanky with that, oh, mail strike on top on San Diego. RP gets dodged! WW getting a little bit embarrassed right there, but BKB gets popped right now, Templar Assassin on the run, they find WW as well. He's going to picked up by a Sonic Wave, Void not in that team fight. He's pressuring on the bot and trying to get that tier two, but uh, MBFC losing a slight team fight here. There. That was costly. That's something I feel like this game for MUFC, sure, they're back into it and looking to scale well to the late game, but one bad clash like that, and then suddenly it's, well, things go back to not being really in an ideal position for them. They're, the gem on the Queen of Pain can start clearing up some wards on the map. Vici Gaming can make, get, get some map control back up. Even though they lose a tier two tower here, we will see Faces Void picking up a butterfly shortly. He's actually got his butterfly now, but I still feel that this Vici gaming side is going to scale well. We've got Life Steal. He goes MKB. Perfect time. Just as Void gets his butterfly, Life Stealer gets his MKB. And Life Stealer really needed this, not just to go through the evasion, but also just because he didn't have the necessary DPS going into late game because of this harder Trask build, as well as having items like drums, Midas. This is great for mobility and attack speed, but he needs just raw DPS. Yeah, he really does. Again, he's going to rely mostly on his teammates uh, through the disabled, through the track, to make sure that he has enough uh, lockdown to keep on attacking. He can't actually, you know, go back to... Sometimes you see Life Stealer to actually go back to a side device uh, just to make sure that he could get those attacks off, but he's not going to do that this game. He's going to rely on his teammates to make sure he gets the right right clicks. And he all he needs is damage at this point, so that's exactly what's picking up. Damage to make sure he could kill just about anybody that gets locked down. Yeah, it's... It's going to be really hard for any... I mean, you, you go in with a Queen of Pain in Fest, you want to sheep someone up, they're dead to this life steal. So if you can find either the Mag, the Faceless Void, someone like Sankey, all these heroes with escape spells suddenly aren't so good at escaping when they get Blink, Scythe, and then there's an infested life steal coming out. I think that's going to be the key thing for Vici Gaming, is find a key pickoff with that Queen of Pain Blink. And I think the big one they want to look for is going to be this Mag in most of these team fights. Again, the issue and, and the, I guess the benefit of having a Void on your team is that any hero that you get initiated on, the Chrono is going to be a big bailout spell. So also you got to keep in mind that a smaller version of the same uh, same spell is the Disruption. Still a very, very good way to deal with the Life Stealer. Of course, a purge from the long range that will, will go through the magical immunity as well as the defense of disruption. So I, I feel like the Radiants still have multiple ways to deal with this. And you can see Avishi Gaming, despite having so much damage on that Roshan, they have to back off, again, respecting the Blink RP, respecting the Blink uh, Chrono, if you will, as well as the Blink Epicenter. So a lot of spells that is quite dangerous, despite, again, the multiple BKBs and the item advantage on Avishi Gaming. Yeah, we'll have to... Uh, it would be interesting to see what Templar Assassin looks to go for with all this gold here, with 3.7k up. I... I feel this is where you need some, some additional DPS. You, you're looking at potential heroes being picked off right at the start. They're not going to worry about the TI. I feel that's the one hero that Vici Gaming are quite likely to overlook. They'll want, a little, they'll want to focus down the mag before he RPs. If our mag's already RP'd, then they look at the Faceless Void. Maybe even the Sanking because of his ability to stun multiple heroes with just an 11 second cooldown. So TA, I feel, if you pick up something like a Desolator or even better, I think maybe a Daedalus at this point in the game, can be doing a lot of damage unnoticed in these team fights. Here we go, smoked up here on MEFC, looking to challenge this Roshan spot. And it looks like FCFC wants to actually start the fight. Wow, very, very kind of brave move. And if they could sneak this by, it could be pretty big. But here comes CYT. CYT, where's the big RP? There's the RP. It's going to be on one. The Chronosphere actually not only getting one there as well. These AoE spells not being used to perfection, but the nice Chrono coming from Rubik on the Hauntrash player. Can you lock him down? About half HP lost. Can he jump out? No, he cannot. Gets bash, gets picked off, and he's done. Looks like San Diego's going to be on the run, but that life stealer so big at this point. That track doing so much more work for that life stealer. There's going to be a drum gets popped there as well. FTFC is going to be dead as well. 
Yeah, somehow she looks like got the uh, ages. There's a jump in from the void. Can they actually? Well, it gets picked up as well. The void actually is having the same issue that Lifestar had earlier. He just can't find anybody to kill because he's getting picked off. He's getting locked down, and that void is getting. Well, he's jumping around like a big creep, not attacking anything. Yeah, he's he's doing his best not get kited around too much. Lifestar's actually going to go back in. He's going on the void here, and I think there may be enough damage to bring him down. The MKB will go through the evasion, but it won't go through the backtrack. But Ends up there's enough damage to bring him down. Faces Void goes down twice. The big thing for me was that fight was Rubik, he managed to steal the RP. He got off a counter RP. It only caught, I think, two heroes, but it was still made a huge difference taking them out of the fight. And, uh, well, TA not spending that gold before that fight. Suddenly, I mean, just having Yasha BKB, this TA just does not pack enough damage right now in these fights to help to bring down a hero like Lifestealer. And not just Lifestealer. Queen of Pain it is pretty damn tanky at this point in the game. If you want to be able to kill this Queen of Pain, you have to do so quickly before she can blink away, before she can go Scepter. And you just can't do so with the current items on this TA. I just want to point out there's the Ghost Scepter on Lifestealer, which is quite interesting. Haven't seen something like that before. San Diego gets purged up a little bit. He doesn't really care too much about that. Looks like, uh, was that Templar Assassin getting burst down? I think so. Yeah, Templar Assassin takes a fall. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm shocked by this Ghost Scepter choice. I, I mean, I, I mean, it can make, it makes some sense, I guess, if you're on the run. But if you're, if you're fighting... Even if Void's attacking you, you don't want to be using Ghost Scepter because your you, Lifestealer's strength is in an ability to basically take head-on fights and Lifestealer's way to victory. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. There's a very, very decent RP and a cost, uh, cost Finale Epicenter combo right there, but CYT says, all right, I have a heart. I'm going to survive through that and basically kill you back. It looks like Winter's going to be on the run. That mid is going to be eventually going down. And I don't think the Radiant team could come back from this. That was, I think that was their last effort. They threw everything at trying to bring down that lifesteal. The RP epicenter was perfectly timed together, but it just wasn't enough. And oh, oh, oh dear. There's a bit of PGG in every one of us, including this faceless void. I'm going to call that the, uh, the Loda Sphere, not PG the, Sphere. The Loda Sphere. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Loda. Oh man, that was that was unfortunate. Well, Loda, Loda normally catches his teammates. That's, that's oh, okay. that was his thing at DreamHack. I, I see, I see. Was, so catch your teammates. That was a complete and utter miss on absolutely everything. Let's not go down that path any further. But Vichy Gaming securing this uh, second lane, the Rax. Got to remind everybody that just joined in. We do apologize for any technical difficulties. This is going to be a game one of a best of three series. Uh, well, looks like the Rubik, the better Chronosphere being dropped by him, but big team fight gets breaking out. But the thing is, Hontrash player, he's just getting bounced around like a ping pong ball. He's actually not doing any DPS. Meanwhile, this Void, or excuse me, this Life Stealer with the Gold Scepter is actually doing all the damage that's necessary. Looks like they're being chased away. But without the Void, I, I don't think they even need a respect damage. They could actually just turn back and fight this. There's a Gold Scepter being used. He's running, he's running. Are they going to turn around and fight this? I still think they could do it. Yeah, I, I think he's going. Yep, he's turned around. He's gone right onto the Templar Assassin here. And without Mag RP, three four, sorry, five more seconds till they have a Mag RP. And even so, we're probably looking at Rubik trying to come in for... Uh, Rubik actually on the sidelines. He's not going to be able to steal this here. There's a side of Ice going onto TFG. And, well, they've brought down CTY. They bring down the life. So they bring down Queen of Pain. Wow. Triple kill for TA. You th I, I, I agree with you, man. I thought they could turn it around. Turns out, well, Vici Gaming, they can't turn it around. Maybe it was the choice of him attacking the Templar Assassin, which had full refraction up, so yeah. it basically did no damage. So maybe that was the wrong target to go on. And a great RP, like you talked about, was cooling down throughout the team fight, and that, that RP uh, made sure you know, they got some extra kills. But more or less a fair victory, pair victory, yeah. as lanes of Raxus are already down. The goal difference well, is... I, I, don't, I mean, the one thing Vici Gaming are, are known and remembered for was a, a certain game with Anti-Mage. Uh, CTY's anti mage, where you basically coined the, the, ter the term Vici Gaming throwing. <laughs> it was like an EG le level of throws that was that was coming out of CTY there, but I, I think it would take a lot to to, uh, to give this game back to MUFC, even with that team wipe. Right, but I mean, at this point of game, how 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 much is true Raxus? When you have heroes like Faces Void, when you have empowering team, you could actually defend against two lanes of big creeps. I think it just comes down to team fight, and again, team fight. If you don't drop any loaded spheres, you could do all right. Yeah, I think if, if I think if we get, especially if we look at, I think if Faceless Void gets himself up a Daedalus in the next, like I, I think if okay, MUFC win one the next big team fight, Faceless Void then maybe has a Daedalus up, and suddenly it's like, well, MUFC 
basically can take this, can easily, uh, maybe not quite level footing when you're down to two sets of Raxes, you're never quite level again, but it gets really hard for Vici Gaming to, to end the game when they, they Faceless Void gets something like a Daedalus up. Yeah. I mean, it still comes out. I don't think Vichy Gaming is out of the woods yet, just because of hero potential, like I pointed out, as well as the Vichy Gaming throw. God, if you're going to be known for one thing, let's hope that you're not known for your throwing ability, but, you know. All right, they were known for more than that. They, just, they had some fantastic games in G. Sure, they actually, definitely. They actually took LGD China to a third game in the playoffs, which was one of my favorite series of theirs. They definitely... Definitely showed that they're not, they're not, all their drafts aren't all about CTY carrying them. And I think that was something which was good to see. They had some strong solo mid play. And that's what we saw here from Queen of Pain. It's Queen of Pain 9, 2, and 10, and has been the one really setting the tempo for this VG gaming side. Te uh, Rubik as well. I mean, you mentioned better, better Chronosphere than the Void. Also, some really nice RP, well, at least one RP seal that I've seen, which had a really nice impact near the Roshan pit earlier. I mean, to be fair, the Rubik's, you know, he garners a lot less attention than the Void, so. It's a lot easier for him to land those chronos. So, and of course, everybody's got their eyes on the void. Uh, Lina has got to be very, very careful. I know he's enjoying his item set to look at all these new animation, but that there's a there's a Templar assassin on your butt. Here comes Fy helping back out. Look at the mobility on these supports: Blink, Skull Scepter, Four Staffs. They're going to be absolutely safe against just against the two highest DPS heroes on the Radiant side. Yeah, I'm very jealous of this. I wonder if it's like a fan who gets him this this Lina set, or if he found it, or. If Vici Gaming are just that damn rich. BTS will cast for Lina sets. Yeah. <laughs> send, send, send those donations to the, uh, to the two very lovely casters. <laughs> I'm Luminous, and my caster is uh, Gods. Yeah, yeah. Tw tweet, at, tweet at us. Send us, send us Lina sets, and uh, we'll happily cast uh, whatever, whatever you want. Yep. Yeah, Top lane here. Looks like MEFC actually aggressively pushing for this territory. Going to draw out at least a glyph, but there's nothing that Dyer needs to do. Basically, they just sit back, pop a glyph. If they want to give out tier two, they can. Because look at the mid and bot. Eventually, the radiant side have to back off. I don't think the Dyer should take this fight at all. Yeah, I, I think at this point the Dyer team are just going to watch. Well, I mean, they just have to watch this radiant base get chipped away at the T4 tower. At this point, I mean, having your T4 towers down to half HP can mean a big deal in the long run. But they're going to take this fight. In goes Hon Trash player. He's going to do a ton of damage. The Chronos for Epicenter. Everything latches on. Queen of Pain gets brought down. RP stolen once again. What an insane play from me out from this Rubik. He's managed to keep alive um, the most of his team here. Life still doing a ton of damage. It's only Sanking who's taken the fall though, and, and the problem is now. MUFC are just getting kited around a bit too much. They managed to bring back the Lina in with the skewer. Wang Wang finished them off with a shockwave. Now, now they move on to the next target. They need to bring down bring down FY on this Rubik. He time walks away. First the RP still now finds an escape. He's four stuffs onto the high ground. He's still alive. He's he got gets the blink. By a trap. There's nothing to catch up to him. Oh no, he gets blink. Dodge is a Mel Strike as well. Sick play here. It looks like FCFC trying to TP back out, but the mini bash is oh, from FCTY gonna bring one down, looking to bring the second one down. Han Trash Pro. Using that native basher, and he looks like he's gonna blink back out. But FY, he's on the run. Blinks forward, four staff forward. There's a blink dagger as well. He finds on trash, bro. There's an open moons, and he's not gonna be running away. There's a framework trying to dragon slave up. Is he gonna be jumping out just fine? The cooldown here. There's a cooldown. He blinks in the trees. He finds them. Blinks away. No! No! I, I, Rubik almost did the impossible there. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? This Rubik just pulled off something miraculous. I don't know how we did all that, but that was some fast fingers, stealing spells left and right, blink, four staffing, time walking away. He went across like about 2k range in about three seconds or something, even less. That was impressive stuff, and if he got that kill at the end there, it would have been even better, but boy, was that some insane Rubik play. That was, I mean, guys, this is just game one between, well, it should be MEFC and VG, but this is game one of Dragon Ball Z. Saga Part 3, and we're gonna have at least one more of this game. Again, this is a best of three series for the GST Challenge. Of course, after this series, we're gonna have LGD International versus Orange Gaming, I believe. Very, very exciting yeah. games, and I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Yeah, and all these games are actually available in Dota TV. Um, it's one of those things which I love to promote because that fills my pockets with money, money, money. Uh, jokes aside, no, Dota TV is available. It's actually only a $3 ticket, and it's not just for the challenge. It gets you access to the GST Challenge, the GST Dota 2, the main event, as well as the GMPGL, which is sort of like the qualifiers for the GST. So definitely worth checking out. But it looks like we are going to have another clash coming out. It's the infested life still inside the Queen of Pain again. But Hon Trash Play is there waiting. He's just going to cleave him up. Queen of Pain goes down first, moves on to CTY. He needs to be able to bring him down. He's bash locking him pretty well here. It's going to be enough. They bring down CTY, buyback from Queen of Pain, but the fight's already lost from VG Gaming. 
We talked about them being up four Raxes here. We talked about the Vici gaming throws, and are we seeing it just now? TFG stunned through the trees. He does hit XTT, but it doesn't look like he knows it. Gem on the Shadow Demon, they've seen him. They've got vision. Hon Trash Player needs one more right click there. Are they going to get it? Yes, they do. Complete team wipe. Five. It's coming out from Vici, but what a. What a disastrous fight. Five for nothing. The two buybacks, by the way, are absolutely gold down the drain. That bait, exactly the same bait, happened in the top lane here. The two team fight started the exact same way with the uh, uh, Refraction Templar assassin gets, getting Scythe. Three people jumping. Of course, you got came out of Queen of Pain. Lysor infested, as well as, I think, another hero jumped in. And that just set up the easiest Chronosphere for a Trash player of his life. And that just everything followed through. The first time you trick Vichy Gaming, that's fine. The second time, that's EG throw status. Yeah, that, that fight shouldn't have happened. They just got baited in. MUFC, they had the Void just... I mean, he wasn't even... I don't even know if they were expecting that. It was just almost gifted to him. Basis Void's like, wait, you're actually going to go on my teammate there? You realize, like, I'm, I'm in 1k rage. I can just get an easy Chronos for everyone. And he did just that. The two key heroes, Queen and Pain on Life, so they both get brought down. The Chronos here makes sure the rage wears off. And then, well, San can get some follow-up stun damage. And... It's just really easy for MUFC to take that fight. They don't get themselves a rack, so that's really the big the big thing here is it's essentially been a bit a big reset with MUFC getting a ton of ground as far as golden XP goes. We go from an, about a 12, 13k gold lead and we're back up to about a 5k gold lead and XP heavily in favor of MUFC. Over 10k XP and well for Vici Gaming, it, despite a massive team fight throw, this game is still I mean, it's anyone's game. They're up four Raxes. They're also on the Dire side. They can look to take this Roshan. If they get Roshan here with Aegis and Cheese, you still have to favor them to win this game, even up against a big team fight of MUFC. All right, you can see FCFC just putting his life on the line like he doesn't care, because he really doesn't. If he could eat a whole bunch of spell for his teammates, he knows his teammates yeah. could bail them out. And Winter, by the way, playing so far forward. It looks like there's a Blink Dagger forward as well. Vichy just can't, actually can't engage. Because their team is, you know, the front line's full of melee heroes, and the Chrono on two, that could be very, very badly. I, I gotta say, if you're Vichy Gaming right now, you play Split Push. Just this put... is good. They've got Queen of Pain top. They do Exactly. Yeah, you, you put pressure in every single lane. Because the Radiant is down by two Raxes, they can't actually stay out of base for far too long. And because Queen of Pain is playing like this way, she could actually build space for Vichy Gaming, the rest of Vichy Gaming, to take that Roshan. So, beautiful, yeah. smart play here right now. When you're up four Raxes, every Roshan on the Dire side should be a free Roshan. There should be no contest over Roshan. It's so, it should be so easy to split push when you're up four Raxes, although Vici Gaming are making it look hard to take Roshan despite being up four Raxes. They should, they should see this coming, but it doesn't look like they're going to. Stun down on the Lina here. It looks like Lina going to get brought down really quickly off the bat. Ghost Scepter, Fenrir is still alive, but not for much longer. TA finished them off and... VG Gaming, this is just a bit uncoordinated. Queen of Pain sees the throne, that's gonna draw a couple of teleportations, go throne's about half HP. T4 towers are down, that's yeah. a big, that, that's where MUFC, that last team fight in the top, it was that couple team fights ago in the, in the dire jungle, that was where those T4 towers took a lot of damage and I think fell down and that's, this is where they're really being punished for not keeping their tier 4 towers alive. They, those things are worth protecting. I mean, credit to MUFC for playing so far forward despite with T4 tower down, trying to delay this Roshan. But it's just delaying the inevitable because, like you said, two racks is down. It is so impossible. It is almost impossible without having a hero like Prophet or Tinker that could join the fight instantly and still defend your base. So uh, eventually, Vichy Gaming is going to get this Aegis and they're going to put it on the Life Sealer. Yes, it is going to be on Life Sealer. What, what happened to the Gold Scepter? Looks like he sold it. Or is that on the Courier? I, I think he sold it. I, I think that's a. A, a good decision at this point in the game. I don't think that Ghost Scepter was doing him a whole lot of good, but this items he's currently sitting on is where he wants to be. His buyback's on cooldown, so he's not worried about... Even even when you've got Aegis, at this point in the game, you want to really have buyback gold as well, especially as a hero like Lifestealer, because you respawn. If your team's all dead or all ditched you, then you're going to die a second time, so you want to have buyback, which he, he should have by the time it's off cooldown, or he should be just about going to have enough gold for. San Diego sitting on the bot lane here, having his own gold as well. I do believe he's going to be going for a Monkey King bar. I mean, crits or Monkey King bars are fine extension item for Queen of Pain. I personally actually like to see something like a a, uh, a Dario Blade. For the factor that you, not only can you uh, pop it on your enemy to do insane nuking damage, uh, you can always save your teammates with it too. So it's just you know nice utility, uh, even, even for a very, very late game item. Yeah, I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. At any point in the game, it can really scale well and be something worth having. But, well, with Aegis and Cheese up, I think Vici Gaming. The problem is, like, I mean, like we saw earlier, Queen of Pain just comes in, pokes at the throne. There's no tier 4 towers. MUFC have no cushion, really. If they want to go out and do something aggressive and risky, if 
if there's a split push coming in, they have to TP back. They can't say, okay, we, we can wait 15, 20 seconds, we can let our tier 4 towers take a bit of damage, win a team fight, and then TP back. They have to TP back and defend immediately if anything's going on here. Life Sealer, Queen of Pain, both with some decent DPS, can um, can really, really start bringing down this throne quite fast. So for, for Vici Gaming, they're in a position of control. They've just got to keep split pushing, like you say, but... Team fights are always going to go in these waves. They've got the Daedalus on the Void. He's not even worried about having buyback at this point. I, I definitely agree. You've just got, got to go big or go home if you're MUFC. You can't afford to just save for buyback over Void because by the time you're dead, in that sort of like two seconds where you're buying back, your throwing's dead. Yeah, they do have that Glyph available, so that plan at least is going to work in the near future, whatever the Glyph yeah. is up. Uh, but I totally agree with you. You go big or go home here. If they want to go Divine even, uh, I'm not going to be against that choice. Uh, the gold graph, the net worth graph, all of those graphs at this point here means very little. I feel like it all comes down to positioning. It doesn't matter if you're up a couple items, if you throw away free kills here and there. You can see Bounty Hunter playing very far forward, getting those tracks off, getting his team mobility. I, I feel like split push is going to be the way for victory for Vichy Gaming, but they still got to be very careful in doing so because there's so much perfect initiation coming on the Radiant side. Uh, blink Dagger on Mag, Blink Dagger on Sand King, Blink Dagger on Templar Assassin, of course, a natural building blink of the Faceless Void. If you get caught out, you're dead. And I'm pretty sure they would drop those one-man reverse just for that like, one kill. Because if the enemy team don't have buyback of that one kill, suddenly it's MUFC's, uh, you know, yeah. their game to play for that next 60 to 80 seconds. I'm sure this is where MUFC would love to refresh up on their mag, where they could be a bit more just sort of, uh, just throw those RPs around before those solo kills. But even without one, like you say, I definitely think they'll use it use it on a solo kill if it's the Life Seal or the Queen of Pain. Even if it just, it may just force on a bike bag. That's where they have to be careful. If they use it on someone like Life Sealer and he buys back to the fight and they suddenly have no RP for, what, 80, 90 that seconds. That could be really bad, yeah. Yeah, then it looks, then it gets ugly. They still got the Chronosphere. I mean, Chronosphere and Sand King Epicenter alone, they don't even have to rely on these big RPs. That's where using it for solo kills can be very justified here because it's not really their only trick to winning a team fight. Actually, I, I do want to, I mean, we're getting into one of those very, very ultra late stage of the game and I want to really ask your opinion on something like this. You know how you could buy back on your hero when they die, right? Yeah. How do you feel about being able to buy back your skills? I know there's an item called Refresher Orb that allows you to do just that, but even that, that has a quote-unquote cooldown. Is it fair for heroes to be able to buy back? Especially for these carry heroes that all they do is, you know, quote-unquote right-click. And when you have a very farm enigma, it just doesn't do much after he black hole. Do you know? Do you know I'm trying to what I'm trying to get okay, at? Okay, so so okay, so you're saying that buyback exists to help carry heroes like Gambit for the non-carry heroes like an enigma. About, yeah, okay, I see. What you mean. Or like a lone druid. Let's say your bear dies in the lake. Sure, sure. You buy back and buy back the cooldown. Right. I, I guess you know not having it gets versatility in the game, and of course it, yeah. it lessens the impact of refresh orb. But it's just a, I guess, interesting space of Dota that. We don't yeah. actually get to see too often because these type of games don't exist too much. Yeah, I, I think that's one of those things, and that's where we were in that game for the G League. You sort of, it's it sort of as as epic as awesome as a game it was. It highlighted the a potential inherent problem with Dota. There's no fixed time limit. You watch a soccer game, you watch a, a let's say a Counter Strike game. There's a set time limit. It only goes for so long. But Dota, if you get two teams perfectly matched in a perfect sort of equilibrium, in theory the game goes for 90, 100, 110 minutes until someone makes a mistake. Which if that never happens, the game just keeps going on and on. So. I think buybacks is one of the reasons that that exists. So I think if anything, we should be looking to. I think it should be instead of looking to give buybacks on spells, you should be looking at sort of giving, giving more restrictions on actual hero buybacks. I think it's just too easy to play around hero buybacks, even with the six minute cooldown. Uh, speaking of which, use for anybody that's only watching Dota recently, uh, buyback used to be a thing that you could do endlessly. Yeah. Shout out to uh, YYF Storm that bought back three times or twice in the same team fight. <laughs> it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, if you didn't catch God's uh, Dota 1 broadcast earlier, you really should because these are some of the more imbalanced things uh, on, on the older Dota maps that, you know, happened in the, in the past that we kind of just talk about now for nostalgic reasons. That's what I always love about casting Dota 1 again, even though it's, I mean, it's obviously been balanced to mirror the changes in Dota 2, but so there's just this whole nostalgia feel whenever I cast it still. I hope there's going to be like at least one more like big Dota two, Dota One event. Um, I mean, there's the GST IDC still going on, but it just doesn't really have that same feel as as other stuff. All right, so in this game so far, we're kind of uh, you know went off a tangent talking yeah. about a lot of different stuff. But both teams are kind of just farming back and forth. Again, it's up to MUFC. They're looking for these smoke ganks, but these smoke ganks are absolutely obvious when you have the big Crete wave coming to your only non rax tower and it's not being defended. I mean, you know what's happening, or yeah. you should. Well, they're not smoked up right now, but you know they're at least looking for a gank, looking for a pickoff. They'll see Void there, 
They make Bounty Hunter does need to be careful. He's very far up. And the big thing is here, everyone on the Dire side has buyback. Except Lena. Except Lena. And Lena's getting very close to having buyback. No, Lena buy Lena's playing a mech here, which is a very sort of late pickup on that mech here. But yeah, having buybacks at this point in the game is going to be the key thing for Vici. They've still got this Aegis and Cheese, but oh no, they don't have the Aegis. They lose the Aegis. So at this point, there's no rule. If they weren't going to push with the Aegis, well, they're not going to push without it. So I, if anything, they're going to just keep pushing out these lanes, chipping away at the MUFC base, and then maybe look to go into the ro ro go for Roche again when it's up. I, I, I just don't see them looking... I mean, they're not really looking to make anything happen right now. I think they're just happy to just watch MUFC starve in their own base. Is there any concern where, if you're either MUFC or Vichy Gaming, to say that once we go into like the absolutely ultra late game stage, we have to say this this team is just flat out better. You know how like PL, everybody thinks yeah. he's the ultimate late game hero. He's actually not that strong in the late game. Like I'm not talking like about. One -on -one. I think right, right, have, right. I mean, if you base like look at the overall five v five picture he is, but if you have like a a, a six slotted faceless void against a six slotted PL, I mean, you can just cleave cleave him down, get with get some crits going and get stuff going your way, but. I think, I, don't, I mean, Vici Gaming, I don't think they're worried at all about the late game. That's why they, they, this game could go 10 minutes from now if, if nothing's changed, except everyone's a lot more far. Vici Gaming say, sweet, we're still far ahead. MUFC will say, hey, we're still far behind, but at least we're not really further behind. So, uh, I mean, the problem is, for Vici Gaming to get further ahead, they've got to kill off the throne. That's really the only next big step. There's nothing else for them to do apart from find a way to kill off the throne, and they're just going to play this, it seems, really safe and cautiously. I, I don't know... Ex it looks like Manta style illusions, maybe from Bounty Hunter. Get a bunch of Manta styles so you can just send in illusions and really push super safe. But I, I just don't know what it is they're maybe waiting for here. I, I don't like the decision to wait for as well. I think I think getting the next Roshan and going straight for it is probably the the best way to win the game because yeah. you gotta respect the uh, double RP on Magnus. That's the thing that you were talking about. He's nowhere close. But uh, again, if this. Imagine everybody has unlimited gold. That's what you're most scared about. The two RPs that could both go through BKB and keep that life stealer no matter how powerful a lockdown. Looks like they're going to lay a trap on the top as Templar Assassin's hiding in the trees. Templar Assassin's also one of those heroes in this particular stage of the game. Not too impressive. Unfortunately, we're not seeing any rapiers. That's what I'd love to see from a UFC here. They've just kind of got to go all out. Void decides to sell his treads, get some boots to travel here. And... Well, he can't really sell the Battle Fury. I think, it, any, I think the Battle Fury is just so good to have that cleave in the Chronosphere to be able to hit multiple targets at once. It just increases your overall DPS in a team fight by so much. Not to mention being able to hit creeps who have much lower armor and bounce it onto a hero do a lot more damage, like a high armor. Uh oh, hit, like top lane here. Damage. Templar Assassin. Oh. Not sure what that's about. She does have the buyback, and I don't think she even needs to use it. But. Have to, yeah, I have to wait and see. If v Vici may look to force the buyback at least so they can start getting on cooldown. Excuse me, chew through a bit of that gold, but I think more than anything, they want to go for Roshan, which is up in about a, a, a 30 seconds to a minute's time. Yeah, the reason that Templar Assassin thought he could actually play this far up is, again, the two previous team fight. that's how they won with Templar Assassin playing far up. But with the very deep Observer, which timed out on the bot, it was like, uh, where Han Trash player is standing at right now, they saw the entire team standing right there, so they just yeah. said, oh, she's alone, let's go kill her. So that's exactly what happened. But seems like Vichy Gaming, again, don't feel safe enough to push in for force out the buyback. Yeah, and the thing is, even with Vichy Gaming not forcing any fights here, look where they're farming. Queen of Pain farming, like, the closest neutral camp to the Radiant base. I mean, sure, it's only a, a tiny bit, tiny bit by tiny bit, Vichy getting further ahead, but they're farming their enemy neutrals, they're farming their own neutrals, they're farming all these lanes. And you'll see aren't getting any additional farm on most of their heroes, whereas Vichy Gaming, they've picked up some new pretty big items here. You have, I mean, Queen of Pain with an MKB, 3.5k gold. Bounty Hunter has 6k gold. All these heroes are getting their next level of items up, including Life Still. It looks like he's going to have a... Yeah, he's gone for an Abyssal Blade now. So he's got rid of his armor, picks up an Abyssal Blade, and he's going to have his Aegis as well. And so they go for Roshan. I think this is it. This is where they look to seal the deal. Abyssal up against this Void is definitely going to be an item which is going to help a lot. If I was VG Gaming, I'll do... I'll Chinese it up so hard. Where I say, all right, I got the life sealer buyback, or I, I got the Aegis, so that I got two life on top. I'm gonna farm for my buyback gold just yeah. to make sure I have three lives up for the next he's, team fight. He's, he's, away he's right from there. Me. Yeah, he's already got there. So I think this is time to go. He's, he just needs 300 more. Looking at the, the buyback tab on, on top, and I mean he'll get that by the time they go push. One creep wave, and he's he's looking good. So I, I think yeah, it's it's gonna be a three life life sealer, um, and basically they don't even have to go five. Five man pushing top or something. They can look to send four top, have a Queen of Pain pushing bottom, and Queen of Pain with this MKB can do quite a hefty amount of damage as well. But I, I, I Vichy Gaming, they're, they're not going they're back, for it. They're back to Life Steal is farming the small camp. Like, good on you. You just got yourself 70 gold. 
<laughs> what what are, what are they respecting coming out from the Radiant team? Again, uh, uh, that the big AOE Womble combo is still there. You know what it is? It's it's ZSMJ's joined Vici Gaming's like second Dota team. He's probably like seeing behind them like yeah. guys. <laughs> guys, you gotta, you gotta there's creeps on the map. <laughs> stretch it to 80 minutes. You haven't quite reached 800 CS yet. Lifestealer is only on 400. What's he doing? He's faceless voids about to hit 600 CS. Lifestealer is doing something wrong here, man. Missing value on the map. You gotta stack, pull the neutral camps, guys. Yeah. Can't miss farm. Man, the ZSMJ stack, man. You watch him like show is just always like going around stacking neutrals for ZSMJ in pubs. It's, yep. it's nasty to go up against. Okay, so Cypher Vice is up on Templar Assassin, which I love this item choice. I feel like it's a very smart buy. Again, as a damage dealer, she gets pretty much outclassed and juked around because the multitude of ghost scepters and the fact that heroes are so tanky at this point. Uh, your Mel Strike's not going to be too impressive. So playing her as a you know utility hero at this point, I mean she's still going to be in the front line. That's going to eat a bunch of spells, but having a, a extra scythe, just reliable initiation is you know pretty nice late game. Yeah, I think the extra scythe will definitely help. I mean it does come at the cost of having no buyback, so you have to be really careful with this thing. <laughs> FY, he's he just playing. <laughs> There's nobody backing him up. He's just like what MP. He's literally, he's, he's going like full Vin Diesel mode right now. I mean, there was no backup anywhere near him. I mean, Queen of Pain, I guess, was like, was somewhat over to near the lane, but he was just scouting oh, things top out. Top lane here, just, like, Scythe of Vice opening here. Bounty Hunter oh. also at the Scythe of Vice, and between Abyssal and Scythe, that's going to be a free pickoff. Yeah, late game Sheep Six, that's, I guess it's the way to go. That's that's what Vici Gaming was stalling, stalling for, so they can get a Scythe of Vice on Bounty Hunter. I mean, this is... I mean, well, Gem actually gets recovered by the mag. Bounty Hunter's still on the side, so he'll probably be looking to come out maybe with another side of ice. But VG Gaming, they're still stalling this. They're just, they're just so petrified of this team fight from MUFC. Even if they go for a split push, I think they're just afraid that Void will kill off two or three. Like, they'll kill off two or three of the team fight and then quickly go back to deal with the, the split push using that glyph to stall. And then suddenly a, a team wipe. Sure, VG Gaming will have buyback, but it, it essentially it resets things, give MUFC more gold, more space. They're just not confident, even with an Aegis up. I'm, I'm in shock right now. I, I don't know what else they actually can get. They're basically, everyone is maxed out. I mean, apart from the supports, but even them, it's like, well, they're not going to be getting any items because all the farm is still going to the Lifestealer. It's still going to the Queen of Pain. It's still going to the Bounty Hunter. FY's got himself Mel Strike, so he's standing right in the middle of a team, but he's got to, again, keep in mind that there's a gem on somebody. He saw Winter walking in, so he blinks immediately back out, split pushing coming on top from the Bounty Hunter. I'm not sure if I'm cursed or blessed. It seems like every game I cast goes past the 80 minute mark. <laughs> so we casted the IG, uh, you know, IG and LGD int. That went freaking insane late game and this is approaching that. I mean, chances of this tournament staying on schedule with, with games going this long is not very likely. <laughs> I feel bad for some some of the teams who have to play later on if they're going to have to wait around for potentially three games of this. I mean, this is definitely entertaining. I, this is this is slight, I, I'd say heavily more entertaining as far as action and... I, okay, I guess we haven't actually seen many kills in the last 15 minutes, but I feel that this is definitely... We've seen a lot of creeps being God. killed. Look at the goal graph. Look when the last kills were. It was literally 15 minutes ago. I say that as a kill goes down. I'm probably distracting you from this. Yep, and I missed it too. Thank you, guys. But looks like he's going to TP just back out. He's going to make it alive. He does. Chronosphere not being used for that. But, okay, well, okay. While, while I'm not distracting you from missing kills, that was the first kill in 15 minutes. Well, no, no, no. They, remember they got one with the Scythe up top with the uh, Abyssal oh, Blade. Oh, okay. Yeah. My goal graph is broken, apparently. Yeah, it's not it is broken. I mean, obviously it should be broken. It's a feature in the Dota 2 games where to make the game seem more epic, it just takes out information. My, my goal graph shows the last kills happening at the 46 minute mark. Yeah, and, same, same here. But yeah. like I said, there's a lot of creeps being killed. Isn't that great to watch? Yeah, and look at look at the buyback tab. Eight, eight of the ten heroes with buyback. Bounty Hunter will have buyback soon. Ooh, FY again. He oh no! Strike. Don't I worry, don't, don't worry. You got Ghost set there. Double cheese. Double cheese. Oh, burn. he's got Burrow Strike too. Oh, Ghost. <laughs> no. Why he's no sorry. use cheese? The poison. If it wasn't for the poison. Going through the Ghost Scepter there, I think he would have been able to blink out. He would have bought time to get his Blink Dagger up with that Ghost Scepter. Vici Gaming are just chipping. Lifestealer goes in, does some chip damage, and oh, there's creeps on the throne, so he can just go in again. He can just keep going in. Here's the thing, though. Like, even if they get Mega Creeps, the game doesn't actually go anywhere. Like, it will yeah. still be the same way as it is right now. So, I feel like Vici Gaming is not... Oh, 
Blink initiation on the mid lane right now. The Void is nowhere near. They're going to get a free kill. Where's the RP? They only grab one. That's going to be a bounty. He has a BKB. Looks like Vor has jumped in as well, but I don't think they care. What happened to just about everybody else? How did Queen of Pain die? How did... Well, how they did... should have had, had two in that RP. And we'll see it going five man mid here, but there's definitely buybacks. They should... Oh, no, there is no... What am I talking about? Bounty Hunter with no buyback. What the hell is... Isn't this guy Chinese? Is this like... I don't know. Not anymore is this own after this game because we're 64 minutes in the game. Why don't you have buyback? What is this? He's 300 gold short of buyback. I don't know if he didn't do his math or just decided he, he wanted the, he wanted an item more. He got a blink dagger on Bounty Hunter. He's definitely disowned. He goes blink dagger instead of having buyback at 64 minutes in. Queen of Pain's now going to have to do some hero work at bottom lane with some split. Oh, not really hero work, but he's going for a bit of a split push. He's actually been scouted. Queen of Pain does have buyback. He's done his homework. He's done his, his algebra. Well, he needs to do some calculus. He's about to get picked off. I'm face palming so hard right now. Well, he may. <laughs> I'm face palming so hard right now. This guy, oh. this guy's Chinese, and he's doing remedial algebra. Well, he's got buyback. That's that's only just his buyback. He's he's got a hun just a hundred gold over the mark. Life still going for a split push at top, and we'll see Queen of Pain buyback, and then Life still a TP back. So, I guess the goal is here to maybe get a Rax, or at least get a tier three tower. But like you say, getting a tier three tower doesn't do much. Getting a Rax it does a little bit. He goes. No he wait, Quap doesn't have buyback, and looks like Vichy Gaming CYT just got Chrono up top. He's got no ages. He gets brought down for absolutely no reason. I mean this. It's like you say at this point, just use a Chronosphere for it. And Void, he's got 10k gold. I don't know what he buys. He, okay. well, you know, he sells his Mask of Madness and gets, I guess, an Assault Caress or maybe a Divine Rapier. Oh, looks like Blink Initiation up here. Where's the Force Staff? No Force Staff? Okay. What's going on here? I thought VG Gaming had this. They did nothing for 15 minutes. Yeah, so we're going to see a Lift and Scythe on FZFZ, and they're going to pick him off, I think. No, Mansile gets popped right now, and... Looks like he's microing the illusion away. Meanwhile, the real hero is going for this kill. Trees. Oh, oh, oh. There's cheese number one being this used. Uh -oh. It's going to be tracked up, but he has melt. He has refraction. He has blink. He should be fine. There's a blink lift. FC, FC. But <laughs> oh, Charpy comes in. Two man bro striker. Vichy Gaming is already dipping into the buyback. Looks like one is already dead. Bounty Hunter said he does not have buy. No, he does. He does have buyback. But look at the top lane here. Han Trash player doing work on that tower. But the mid also in big trouble as well. Well, um, I, I don't, I don't really have much. When the actual fuck? I'm, I'm just getting completely like mind fucked by this game. I really don't know what to say. This, this was absolutely crazy. Templar Assassin actually died to creeps after, like, the strong creeps going down the mid lane after that, after that RP and Burrow strike. He's like, oh, I can go back in, but his refraction was off. The creeps hit hard at this point in the game. Those creeps going down mid lane on the dire side, they hit for 50, 60 damage, and obviously gets reduced by a bit when there's six or seven of you on, on you. They brought down the TA. He did have to buy back, so. The good news is, looking at the buyback status, most heroes have buyback on cooldown, except for the Void, except for the Queen of Pain. So those are the two heroes to watch out for, I guess. Looks like Vichy Gaming says, all right, we have no buyback, but we ain't Chinese, so let's go initiate. <laughs> With the Blink Dagger, Scythe of Ice, I think they're gonna find Magnus. Wow, they spent so much time not doing it, they are gonna catch up the Maggot bottom lane, looks like there's no escape for him. Wait, oh, wait, no, wait. no, no, he's got force! He's got ghosts! Oh, no, but there's a three-man chrono on top! There's a buyback! Epicenter being channeled! Epicenter is gonna be on top of three! Here we go, bro! Oh, they're gonna go on CYT! Can you actually bash him down? Down to about half HP! He's forced half out! No, he's dead! Does he have buyback? No, he does not! Looks like Bounty Hunter gets tracked! He gets found! He's dead! Right-click! Yep, they get him there as well! I feel bad for this Rubik. He's on a team of, like... Throwers. I don't know what it is. <laughs> this Rubik's doing so much. He stole Chronosphere. He Chronosphered two heroes apart from the Void to keep him out of the fight. But the entire time, it's just not going well for the for the rest of his team. I mean, Void catches three in the ultimate, and it, it just goes absolutely horribly wrong. I, the thing is, I guess they maybe get some Raxes here. I don't think they can end the game. Problem is, they have to all constantly defend their throne because there's no tier four towers. I guess it's only Shadow Demon they have to send back here. Void, he needs to sell his Mask of Madness. I don't know why he's got a Mask of Madness. It's, even an Assault Crest is better than the Mask of Madness for it, as far as attack speed, armor, and everything you get from it. Gotta hold on to that 12,000 12, yeah, gold. Because has got Necrobook. What's a Necrobook gonna do at 68 minutes? Who's got a Necrobook? <laughs> Lena. <laughs> Lena just spent like 2.6k gold on a Necrobook. Could have had buyback. Could have had a four staff even. Could have maybe started building a side of ice, but he's like, no, nah, I'm gonna get a Necrobook too. 
uh, Queen of Pain trying to win the game despite Glyph has been up for about an hour, so she's not going to get any kills. Meanwhile, Hontrash player says, dude, I got 13,000 gold in the bank, don't need it because I earn interest. Like, Han Trash player is already fast expanding Heart of Storm right now. Because he's got so much gold. He's fine. Here comes Queen of Pain. Going for some like all in back during. Queen of Pain has cheese at the bottom lane. Nope, he decides against it. There's a Chronosphere up. I, yeah, there's a Chronosphere. So and two Raxes up okay. here. So we're in parity in terms of Raxes. And FZFZ is still working on the top here. He's going to BKB and blink back out. Oh, FY is chasing though. And nope. it looks like Queen of Pain also might be caught. No, he's going to be fine. Looks like Void's going to go into the uh, uh, pit and he's going to find himself in ages. You know what this reminds me? I'm going to make a reference that about probably five viewers are going to get. When you watch Dota 1 replays, and you know when you get the wrong version, like wrong yeah. version of the replay yeah. on the patches, and 40 yeah. minutes in, people start throwing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Gods? <laughs> this is exactly what's happening right now. Yeah, you just start like seeing this hero like go straight down the mid lane like a hard carry, and he's like, he just goes walking into five heroes, dies without casting a spell, and you're right, like, right, right. um, that that wasn't normal. Did he lag? Did he disconnect? And you're like, oh wait, no, nope, I've got it. Got the wrong patch. We're watching this game on the wrong patch right now. Well, are we watching it like from the future? Is this actually like the six point seven eight patch, or Maybe. I don't know, man. I don't know. This game is <laughs> my mind's being blown. I'm. I, I, I'm just blown by the amount of gold that Void has. Like, I, I'm just shocked that he doesn't think that he should replace Mask of Madness. I mean, I, it's a lot. Like, okay, he okay, okay. This, like, this, this thing. Get a Satanic there. I mean, you do sacrifice a tiny bit of attack speed. We'll talk about that later. As and life steal. Entire back throw attempt, back door attempt. They're gonna go in winter. Winter gonna force that back out here. Where's the Chrono? They're looking for it. They're gonna focus on FC FC. There's gonna be a Chrono that's gonna be about on three heroes. And and can they kill San Diego on top? Birdo Shrike coming in from. Oh no! CYT gets locked down. Oh, that's the RP we're looking for. They grab everybody except the life stealer. Well, no, that's from the Rubik actually. That was sick. Okay. Yeah, this guy's enough RP, but it's still not enough. This guy's <laughs> Super Saiyan 4, but he's playing with a team of Krillins, and they can't do shit. <laughs> I'm so angry right now. I mean, he's Super Saiyan 4, but the thing is, he doesn't have any DPS. Like, I feel like he's the Krillin who's gone Super Saiyan 4, while the rest of his team has just been like, freaking, I don't know. Completely they can't GG! And that's it. 70 minutes in, we got we got ourselves a game. What the actual play. fuck? I'm sorry, gods, but I, my mind has been lost right now. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, Void with 16k gold. Um, I, I don't know what's, I don't know what's kind of the biggest surprise point here. They're just Vici Gaming losing it. There's some. I mean, to me, the highlight is still going to be that Rubik when he survived in his own jungle. We time walked four staff, blinked away after TA. He dodged the meld attack. Like the, to me, that was the most epic point of this game, but. Unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. Well, game one is going to be in the books as MEFC somehow has won the game. Despite a humongous disadvantage against them at one point. And we're going to be going to game number two. This has been a presentation of Beyond the Summit. For more episodes of Dragon Ball Z, stay tuned. We'll be back very, very soon. Of course, this is Gods and Luminous. Hope you guys enjoyed the broadcast so far. We do apologize for any technical difficulties. Hopefully, we're going to get more of these uh, back online. So... Thank you guys, and uh, we'll be back very, very soon.